Hello, uh, I'm Coleman, as you all know. I'm going to chat a little bit about my major paper today. Um, the topic that I chose was uh, allyship, specifically allyship in the context of a legal clinic such as Classic. Um, now, my choice of topic uh, was due to a number of factors, I guess. Um, last, uh, last term in uh, my ethics class, I did a paper on um, that kind of revolved around the topic of um, of paternalism in 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 lawyers and in a lawyer client relationship, uh, and I kind of wanted to to go a little bit deeper into that, and I feel like um, because of that, because of um, the experience that I had there, I realized that paternalism with lawyers and clients is an, is an issue. Um, and that's something that kind of comes up in the context of allyship. Um, but my my primary reason has to do with my own personal identity. Um, and that was something that I struggled with initially going into the project was how much do I want to make who I am a part of this? And I feel like because I am, um, I am white, I am a male, uh, I am able-bodied, I am a Christian, I have a lot of um, a lot of privilege in Western society. And so because of that, I, I feel like I'm in a good place to address the issues of allyship because um, if I want to uh, address some of the uh, inequality and the oppression in the world, a lot of the times I'm only able to do that through um, allying with those who are um, who are affected by, by those problems. I very much benefit from the status quo and so I feel as though um, addressing allyship for myself and for others who may be interested in reading upon it further. Um, I feel like that's something that I can contribute to to Classic and to other nonprofits like it. Um, and especially the, especially for um, for young lawyers like myself. Um, I, I realize that uh, I'm not alone in the identity that I have for myself and that a lot of other law students I don't think I'm out of, I don't think I'm um, speaking out of turn by saying that a lot of other law students are also in the place of privilege that I am. And so I feel as though I have a, a not a duty, but I have a, I'm in a good place to be able to, to chat about that. Um, so what is allyship? Uh, being an ally uh, is kind of, there's a there's a general, the general definition and then there's the more nuanced social justice definition. An ally in the general, in the general sense is someone who, um, who forms a partnership or, uh, a mutual agreement with another person and in the context of social justice which is where where my focus is and allyship is when a person who is in a position of privilege um, aligns their interests with those of people who are oppressed or who are discriminated upon and so an ally is someone who recognizes their privilege and uses it to address the inequalities in the world and to address the oppression that other people are experiencing uh, now, privilege is uh, something that kind of has a lot of nuance to it. Uh, again, like allyship, it has a general definition that's used every day. Uh, but as we um, progress in society, it seems as though the social justice use of the word privilege is more and more common. And privilege, in essence, means that a person is not affected by oppression uh, and uh, in turn benefits from the fact that that oppression is in place. A person who is white, for instance, benefits from the discrimination placed upon people who are not white, white um, and they in turn um, get uh, pushed ahead in the world because they are not affected by that discrimination. Uh, some examples are able-bodied privilege, the privilege that you get from not having a physical handicap, or male privilege, uh, the privilege that is um, given to those people who are not female or not um, not transgender. And so um, being able to address that privilege and being to identify that you're in a position to benefit from the status quo and that others don't benefit the same way you do is a big part of becoming an ally. Uh, some of the steps to becoming an ally are, like I said, acknowledging that you have a privilege uh, and then one of the most important things that I focus on in my paper is the willingness to listen and to be humble uh, in the face of, of oppression and uh, with other people who are facing the problems um, of, of society. 
as a person in privilege, you're uh, in a in a, a position where it might benefit you to deny that those uh, that, that discrimination is happening and that there isn't um, that the degree of discrimination is less than a person who is in the position to to see that discrimination firsthand would 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 tell you. And so, an important part of becoming an ally is listening to people who are oppressed and who are going through that problem themselves, and to be able to to say, yeah, this is an issue that I don't fully understand, and so I'm going to do what I can to, to address it. I, in my paper, I also talk about some models of, um, of allyship. Uh, one of the, the ladies that I focus on is Melissa Fabello. She's a blogger, a feminist, a sexual positivist, um, and she uses her platform to, to give a voice to people who are in a position of oppression and who are facing discrimination, and she, uh, I would consider her to be um, a model for other allies. The other person that I use is actor, uh, former actor, now deceased actor, late actor, Marlon Brando. Um, Brando isn't an entirely unproblematic figure to use, but uh, he does use his voice to um, bolster other um, groups who are trying to fight for uh, equal, um, equal rights, uh, including um, in, uh, American Indigenous peoples and uh, African Americans, uh, especially the Black Panther movement. And so I use those two to kind of say what uh, what an ally looks like. In my paper, I also address some of the issues with allies. There are people who think that um, the idea of an ally is entirely problematic in itself and can't be reconciled with, um, with um, oppressed people and who believe that any use of privilege, even if it is to help people in uh, in oppressed positions uh, is problematic and that it shouldn't be done at all. Uh, and so I try to address some of those problems in my paper as well. Um, I don't think those pap those positions are, um, I don't think they can be entirely refuted just in my paper. I think that they're valid positions and that's a problem that uh, is going to be, have to be addressed going forward. So, so yeah. Uh, and then I focus a little bit more on lawyers in the um, in, in this uh, area of allyship and what lawyers can do and what lawyers need to, to do to address the fact that uh, in, in the position that we inhabit, we're asked to provide advice to other people and we're asked to, to use our voice for other people. And so because of that, there is a tendency to be paternalistic with clients and to say, I know what's right, you don't. And in some cases that's true and that's what makes it, makes it uh, an issue is that sometimes you do know what's best, but there are plenty of times when you don't and when the client knows what's going on and you need to listen to them and you need to to, to hand the floor over to them and listen to their problem. Um, so yeah, I know that's quite a bit to, to sort through and I hope that I've done it in a coherent way. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for probably nothing. Um, but I would appreciate the support nonetheless. Um, yeah, anyway, if you have any questions about my paper, you can feel free to comment and I'll, I'll respond to them and as best I can, um, or just talk to me in person.